Hey guys, I'm here at Emerald City Guitars in Seattle, Washington on the Guitar Store Tour and there are more vintage guitars in here than most stores I've been to, if not the most I've seen in one store. It's really awesome and I thought I would take this opportunity to compare vintage guitars versus new guitars. Why would you buy a new guitar if you can buy a vintage guitar? Why would you buy a vintage guitar if you can buy a new guitar? What are the pros and cons? We're about to find out. I'm gonna play some ridiculous guitars, both old and new, and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. Let's go. So when it comes to the holy grail of vintage instruments, a burst, I believe, is at the top of the list. An old Les Paul, it just sings in a different way than any guitar. And this guitar has seen things, and those things come out in your guitar playing. <laughs> guitar, whether that matters to you or not, would greatly influence why you would ever want a vintage guitar because it's almost about the story of the guitar as much as how it sounds. But some staples of a 59 Les Paul PAF patent applied for, in case you don't know what that means, these are basically the first iteration of humbuckers. Single coils came first and then humbuckers came after and sort of smoothed out the sound, less noise on the uh, electronic side of things, and an overall beefier tone. This feels a lot nicer as far as like going from the vintage to the new model. This kind of feels a little bit, again, the consistency of a newer model, I feel that, but the neck feels a little bit truer to uh, you know that 59 style and just overall the tone I think is still right there that Les Paul sound <laughs> the pros and cons of a vintage guitar when it comes to the price is a vintage guitar is an investment. It is something that is collectible, it's a rarity, it's an exclusive object that is holy to the owner and that's what makes it alluring. But at the same time, vintage guitars are expensive. That means most people can't afford them. It's not exactly like real estate where you can live in the guitar while you own it. Uh, you kind of have to have some sort of vision or some sort of screw loose to buy most of these instruments and uh, well, that kind of describes me. One tough thing you may find owning a vintage guitar is you have some anxiety about the thing. I mean, if it's worth tens of thousands of dollars, you may not ever even want to play it. Maybe it just sits in the case, whereas a new guitar, you're not quite as worried to uh, play it in and use it all the time. So there does come a certain territory with owning a high-grade instrument like a vintage Strat or a vintage Les Paul. But at the same time, it just sounds so magic. It feels like something of substance in your hands. So with a newer guitar, there are a couple pitfalls you can avoid just by it being made in this century. Uh, first of all, that would be the electronics are all done most likely by hand, but with machine assistance, especially the way the necks are cut and all the advantages mechanically that we have today are mostly positive influences on the end result of 
especially custom shop guitars, but most high-end new guitars that are paying homage to the vintage era, they're doing most of the things right. It's really the intangibles and the things you can't replicate just due to the age of the wood, for example, and of course, if you don't believe in tone wood, well, then that doesn't matter to you anyway, although you are probably wrong about that. for this one, the neck does not feel nearly as worn in. You can tell that this is based on a true story, but it's not the true story. So as far as the playability, I do prefer the vintage one, but let's see how this one stacks up tone-wise. <laughs> It does feel a little bit more consistent as far as the playability. It's not quite as comfortable, but it's more consistent. So that definitely feels newer as far as the characteristic. But again, there's just a tiny bit of something missing, knowing that I'm probably one of the only people who's ever played this guitar versus a guitar that's been around for 50 years plus. Now the one advantage, obviously, that newer strats have is unless there's been some modifications done, there's no five-way switch in the older strats. So we have access to this sound. We all know what that's from. So we have these two extra strat sounds, which I'm really partial to these split sounds. And then there are certain guitars that just make you play a certain way, almost like you're possessed. And usually that unlocks a piece of musicianship inside you that you didn't know was there. Maybe acquiring a vintage instrument is just about unlocking some hidden potential inside you. That's what we can tell ourselves, right? <laughs> If you don't care about the history of the wood and the little tonal differences, then maybe vintage isn't the way to go for you. But if you're addicted to it, then you can appreciate a vintage instrument. Yeah. That's where you can really hear the age of the wood with an acoustic guitar. Yeah. But it just really goes to show the effect wood can have because a lot of people think wood doesn't matter. What do you think? Uh, I know it does. Oh, you know it does. Oh, yeah. Overall, you 
can't really go wrong with a custom shop. I think the custom shop is the in-between. If you are after that vintage sound but don't have $420,000 to spend on a guitar, then that is a great alternative and it pays homage. It stays true to the soul of the guitar. So I think in the end, if you can plug a 1959 Gibson Les Paul Burst into a Klon Centaur, into an old vintage Fender Reverb, you're gonna have a great time. Obviously not everybody can do that. I can't do that unless I'm in this magical guitar store in Seattle. Regardless if you want an old guitar or a new guitar, you should probably buy it here at Emerald City Guitars in Seattle and hopefully you enjoyed the video until next time I'm not gonna throw I'm not gonna throw these at you don't worry